Hi folks, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. That song is Masha Montano's Road March winner from 2011. And this evening, as I was planning the show and figuring out content and trying to figure out how we're going to do things and how exact, what exactly are using and um, you know what what things are going to reference, that song came to mind. I sent tech guy a message and I was like, you know, what to use? And he gave a, a suggestion and then this popped into my head. Hi, evening, evening, evening. I forget my manners. Let me start from the top. Hi, Renee. Hi, Ian. Hi, Len Lees. Shaquille, Donna Mae, Fabian, Sule, Barbara, Jazzy, Michelle Paula, Sheldon, Michael Edmonds, um, Shari, Nikisha, Jamelia, Merlene West. Right. Olya, thank you so much for showing up and, and, and being in the live with me this evening. Hi, Terrence. How are you doing? So, as i figuring out how I'm going to shape the live and what is I going to be using from the live. Hi, Kareem. All the way in Amsterdam. What's the time in Amsterdam right now, Kareem? Was it was the time difference? Uh, yeah, I see that. A woman to be head of SORT and, you know, all kinds of things going on with SORT. Interesting, right? Hi, Dre. I had a shout you out. If I ain't shout you out, there's problems. Hi, Ola. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Glenn Chambers. Hi, Dave. Hi, Yvonne. Juanita. Veronica. Marva. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. I realized I had a, had a pause at two seconds before I jump into why I chose Advantage and just, you know, tell people good evening. Hi, Lystra. It's, 12, it's two minutes past midnight. Okay. You up so late, Kareem, to listen to me? Oh, yeah, there's work at night shift. Where does do Kareem? Spill the beans. Oh, we we want to know. Hi, Rain Man. Where the bread? What bread? <laughs> I didn't promise no bread this evening. Hi, Barbara Joseph. Hi, Terrence. Hi, Larry Roach. Oh, you're working at night shift, Kareem? Okay. Well, you know, enjoy enjoy the shift. And I hope that I can, you know, at least brighten up your, your shift work tonight. Right. So, folks. I planning this thing and it in my head for more than a week now it's a while now I want to talk to all you about the Treasury totots right and how you know we just latch on to the Treasury totots some people know breastfed is best fed when there's babies and it is wean off and switch to bottle and then switch to solid food and them kind of thing so and then it have some people who just latch on to that breast and then they go of it at all and so we have some persons like that here so I planning things this evening I sit down here and I say to myself what's the best song to use boy because I can't think of nothing that specific to the Treasury are they thinking dollar wine I can't make up my mind and then I remember this song advantage let me take advantage trample it ramfle it stamp on it and i thought that is what we have done to the treasury and the resources here for from forever right trample it ramfle it take advantage etc so i was ever so happy that there was a soca tune that would support the the things that i wanted to talk about this evening and yes I see Avril say head full of teeth and still sucking. Yes, girl. Head full of teeth and they clamp down hard. Right? So them teeth bite down on that nipple. And not for nothing they ain't letting go. The breast might be bleeding from the teeth bite down on the nipple, you know. But they ain't letting it go at all. So, I wanted to talk about how you just go about doing it. Why? Because I feel everybody need to understand exactly how... We do this, and I don't want to make it seem as is only as if it's only one or two sections of people here just do it. But some sections of people just more skillful at doing it, right? 
It's what? 11 o'clock in the UK? Okay, hi, Myrna. Good night. And thanks for staying up with us. <laughs> Myrna said the topic too hot to miss. Yes. Myrna, you know I'm on YouTube, right? So you could, um, you could always subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And if you miss it in the night, you just... Um, the, the YouTube will send you the notification and you can watch it the next day. Maybe when you're on the tube or when you're at your office on your commute or whatever it is, you could look at it then because I don't want it to be missing necessary sleep now. So I tell tech guy, I want a poster, I want a flyer. And I want a flyer, you know, depicting how we just abuse the treasury. And this is what tech guy sent me. Let me tell you something. I'm the best graphic artist in the country. I probably are the best graphic artist in the region. It ain't nobody to touch tech guy when it come to giving you a poster that likely to blow your mind and raise people blood pressure. Because I sure when people see this poster, they get real vexed, all right? So that is, this is tech guy's rendition of us clamping down on the treasury tuttuts. You see, Renee says she scream when she see it today. Renee, I ain't give you wrong. I screamed too. I was like, oh God, that guy, nobody gonna like me. Nobody. I will never have friends as a result of that guy. So big up to that guy and he poster. Right. So let me get into it. Because I know I come here to find out exactly how to go about doing this. Right. So let me start. Where is where they started this list, boy? We're number one. So the first thing you had to do is set up a group. Yes, Barbara, I agree with you. Let me add your comment to the feed so people will see. Yes, I agree. We need an exhibition of his posters. One of these evenings, the live will be dedicated to Tech Guy's top five or top ten posters. I I'm going to do that for you all. You always still want to know who Tech Guy is? Mm -hmm. Tech Guy is going to be one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean as well. I'm not going to let people know who Tech Guy is. The minute people know who Tech Guy is, you know, all could fall down there. They might decide that they're going to attack he too. I prefer to attack me. They attack me and me alone. No, I ain't, I ain't want nobody attack Tech Guy. No, 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 <laughs> no, I'm not going to get to see tech guy at all. Once I could prevent it, no. So, number one, yeah, you get some tech guy t-shirts, Clement. You could, that could happen. You could get some tech guy t-shirts. I feel I want to do some tech guy t-shirts and some tech guy hood tops. People deserve tech guy t-shirts and tech guy hood tops and all they could walk around the country you are all tech guy i want everybody to, to to dress as tech guy right so i am tech guy that's that's what is going on it's only five minutes past seven in barataria saria how barataria saria three minutes behind the rest of the country akil akil is eight minutes past seven in dego martin we're trying to tell me you in a different line of longitude come the man akil <laughs> check your battery on that clock what if I'm tech guy? <laughs> Why do they want to know? <laughs> Stop wanting to know. Let me get back to my list, please. I have a whole life to do it all this evening. <laughs> and I want to cover the, the details of the life. So the first thing, set up a group. Set up a group, right? And is how you're going about the setting up of this group. Because setting up the group important to every single thing that have to happen afterwards why because most of your success at sucking the treasury tuttuts dry is in your ability to leverage the power of that group where there's a group of one because in trinidad would be very good at setting up groups of one or a group of many so setting up the group is important because once you can leverage the power of that group it have plenty things that you could do, right? So that group could be a company. You could decide that you're setting up a company. So you go legal affairs. 
you stand up in your line, you pay your money, you set up your company. Or you might be in a position where you don't matter go down to legal, legal affairs. You could pull a string or two or ten and you get your company set up and you have your company on a nice, legitimate company set up. Boom. Good. So you have a company. Or you could set up a religious organization. Religious organizations are very, very, very useful when you want to be able to suck the treasury tuttuts. As a matter of fact, religious organizations sucking the treasury tuttuts predates the current treasury, right? So we have had religious organizations sucking the resources of Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean, the New World, from ever since because that's how religious organizations just function. So you could set up a company, you could set up a religious organization, you could start a gang, right? Start a gang. You could go ahead and, and start a gang. Norms, norms, norms. It had nothing to stop you. You, all of you on this live here could decide all you setting up a gang and call all yourself, you know, <laughs> new source gang, right? Set up a gang. You could set up an NGO, right? I know Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann say she want to learn how to drag tatats. Sherry Ann, are we talking about this for the purpose of the treasury or is it a different kind of tatats you're discussing here? I, I want to be clear, <laughs> Sherry Ann, because I talking about the treasury, <laughs> right? Me and you know what else you talking about. I talking about the treasury. Tre but Sherry Ann want to, you know, she want to learn how to drag a tatat. Thanks for that contribution, Sherry Ann. So you could set up a company, a religious organization, an NGO, a gang. You could set up a special interest group. Right? You could decide that you're setting up a special interest group. What is most important when you set up these various organizations? Whichever organization, you could decide that you're setting up one or you're setting up all. So you could have... Uh, company, religious organization, NGO, and gang, and a special interest group. You could just decide is everything, right? You, you want it all. So you have your fingers in all of the pies. So that way, whichever group could leverage the most amount of power when it comes to the treasury, tut -tuts, you in that position. So Sherry Ann, if you're in it to win it, set up a group, right? Set up a group. Make sure is one of the following. Renee says she can't miss my lives. Renee, <laughs> Renee, suppose you eventually miss it one of these days. All right? So that's why you need to go to YouTube and click subscribe. So that way if you ever miss it, you're in a position to get a YouTube subscription and, and get a YouTube notification, sorry, and check it out on YouTube if you, if you happen to miss, miss it, right? <laughs> no, Sherry Ann. The comment is song wrong. If you want to drag a tutus, you want to drag a tutus. Nobody here, nobody, nobody here judging you, you know. The real fellas on this live here right now wish them did study to say it the way you say it, right? Because they know that's why that's why they're really here. They want to find out how to drain the treasury because them don't know how to do that, right? Them come here because they want to find out how to drag a breast. So we could try and see how we could facilitate them. So you're setting up a group. That's the first thing, right? So group setting up. Boom. Right. Let me clear the screen there a little bit. Get things in our order, right? Get things under a particular kind of format and, and thing here. Next thing. After you set up the organization, whichever organization you set up, create a following or create a cause. And let me tell you why I say create a following or create a cause. You could create a following by getting a large number of people around you. Supporting. Part of. Right? That's what I tell you. <laughs> New source could pretty much qualify. It's just that we ain't hunting down on paper yet. Or you could create a cause. If you create a cause, then you have people who interested, who emotionally invested. And let me tell you something. Being able to manipulate people's emotions, critical to being able to suck the treasury tuttuts, right? When you can manipulate public emotions and public opinion, you're in a really good position to be able to latch on to the treasury tuttuts and hold on 
for dear life. It has some people who hold on to that treasury breast a good 50, 60 years now. They ain't letting go at all, at all, at all. Correct, Ant Antonio Declan Ross. You see, all you, you know, all you fellas bright, you know. Me, I don't need to do these lives no more, you know. I could pack up shop this week. After this Sunday night, I could stop doing lives. Right? I could stop doing lives after after this after this evening. Why? Because all you on top of things. You start a cause. You get people to fight up and, and be re real invested in your cause. Now, is a range of causes you could have. Uh, let me let me go back to you could women and children. Women and children, real important as a cause to get people um, emotional, right? You could, once you have any sort of cause that's centered around women and children, ah, oh boy, you see, look, you know, Shaquille, all you need, you know, Shaquille said Jericho Foundation, me not to say nothing. Right? Me not to say nothing. Watch, 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 watch. Me not to call no names. All you know is, you know, me not to call no names. So you set up your group and you make sure you're creating a following or you're creating a cause. The following is to have the numbers. The cause is to have an issue out in the public domain that may have affiliates and impact and input from um, multinational NGOs and external NGOs and them kind of things. So, yes, Nicole. So, supporting sing single mothers. You could also have, let me tell all you some of the other causes you could have. Environmental things, right? You could just name the group after some sort of environmental thing. You could decide that the cause had to do with employment. You could decide that the cause had to do with poverty. But what is important? Oh, also, I forget to put this up as, as, as a cause. Business. Right? Business chamber. That is one of the things. A business chamber. Set up a business chamber. It don't matter if it actually have businesses and business people in the chamber. Just set up a business chamber. So they could decide is, I don't know, the fishing depot business chamber. It could be, you know, Bonds Road, Smith Street, Williams Trace. But set up a business chamber to say that you are representing the business interests of a particular community. Or you set up some kind of charity or you have some sort of charitable cause yes thank you very much oh god you see tell me not to say nothing for the love of the culture right set up some vague thing and say it's a cultural organization for the love of the culture right somebody's look <laughs> dirty say dirty say maruga business chamber <laughs> dirty dirty i'm sure it have business down in maruga a uh, sure, a uh, sure, 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 sure. What kind of business Maruga have and whether the businesses are registered businesses, entirely different kettle of fish, right? God, yes, yes. Look, look, all this, all the talking the things. Me need, me need to do this live, you know. All you don't know the things. Oh my goodness, Akil. <laughs> Oh, Akil. Why, why is Akil reading my mind? Akil, 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 did you sit down next to me and plan this live? Did you? All right. Akil, you're overdoing it now. You're overdoing it now. They go shut down the live. All right. Yes, the 1% business chamber. You could decide you're starting the 2% business chamber. You could decide you're starting the 27% business chamber. Right? All kind of thing you could decide you're, you're trying. The point of the matter is you're creating a following or you're creating a cause. You set up an organization. And when you set up this organization, you are making sure that it is touching on issues that are sensitive or you have a wide enough following that when you start to make noise, 
you can make plenty noise or you could threaten and say if i start to make noise it are all of these people behind me here who will be backing me because the number of persons will equate to a voting block that critical that important right you're creating a voting block because once you have a voting block in our order then it are all kind of thing you could do but let me tell you something you can't have that's now and i want to i want to close off some things here when you create that following or cause you can't have any fixed goals no fixed goals it is not going to be a situation where you have a one-year plan a five-year plan a ten-year plan you have no goals at all your whole goal is you have formed an organization you have a following you have an interest that the public that could whip up public public um emotion right and all you're doing is you're lobbying or you're pressuring based on the cause or the interest that you have that that you have established and that's what you need to understand never have any fixed goals no fixed goals only one leader for life only one leader for life so you must never have any fixed goals and only one leader for life wherever the organization is no fixed goals one leader for life and what that leader does is making noise pressuring lobbying because when you are in a position where you have only one leader for the last 1700 years of existence and that leader is in a position where he have a whole slew of businesses allegedly behind him supporting him and he could leverage power then that person could call shots and say we need this done we need that done do this do that do the other we want this contract we want that contract do this do that the other anthony morgan beach all your conduct poor all your men conduct poor <laughs> all your men conduct poor why <laughs> why <laughs> all, your men, all your men need to control all yourself right so no fixed goals when you set up your cause next thing oops just now i need to we number two boy right next thing i need all you to do is make political friends right so you set up your cause or you set up your organization make political friends making political friends is very important once you have set up your organization because when you make political friends it means that it have people now that you could apply pressure to because remember there's your friend so you could whatsapp them you could message them you could email them and when they tell you kiss my ass you could then come out in public publish the email where they say kiss my ass and apply pressure left right and center to see where it is you could get done now when you are in a position like that where you have made friends please ensure that you take as many pictures as possible with your friends and you post up the pictures with your friends because you want to establish to your following and to your group that you are powerful you know people you just rub shoulders with the best of them. We just lime, we just party, watch we, right? We're doing it for the grams, right? Everybody's had to do it for the grams. So make sure that when you have um, set up your organization and started your cause, that you make political friends and take as many pictures as possible and videos as possible of you with your political friends on social media and so that way you will be in a position to prove to your following that you have power further to that you might even be able to get more persons to follow you because they're gonna start thinking 
that person have power let we line up with self for that person let we like that person right let we spend time with our person so make political friends that's that's part three for a after you have made these political friends when election close make rabs right so you have made political friends when elections close start to make rabs and why do you make rabs when elections close because if there are things that you want if you want to be able to eat a food during the elections campaign if you want to be in a position where you could influence who sit down in what seat or you actually want to run for a seat for the elections campaign making rabs is one way for you to establish your political might and power right so if you have polit political might political power what you do is you make a rabs that's no that's no right so you you know you make your rabs and you're making your rabs because you want to establish your people that yes i have power i have sway i could influence what is going with votes here and it's really 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 important that you understand exactly how to make your abs and who to make your abs with and what kind of pressure to apply because remember this again let me get back to, to to the main point here this is about being able to leverage your power to gain access to the treasury so you could bite down on a nipple and suck for their life right good then after you start to make your abs because it's important for you to build your narrative build your story build your agenda properly when you start to make your abs make sure that you are consistently telling people that you're doing it for them are doing it for all you remember two nights ago we talked about gaslighting we talked about how to gas up a nation and that's one, this is part of what we talked about two nights ago. You have to remember at all points in time to tell people that all of the abusive things that you're doing is for them. So when you have decided to set up your organization to exploit people and you're making rabs, make sure that you are at all points in time telling people that you're making all of these rabs and you're abusing them for their own good. All right? for their own good do forget right at every point in, at every turn you're doing it for their own good right i hope i'll get any point i'll get any points right right Rem so remember any other satan up i'm doing it for the people right for the people i'm doing it for the people right next step or the next thing to do you're starting when i say start a company i talking about like a contracting company or a cleaning and maintenance company right we're cleaning hey we're cleaning and maintenance we're doing quite down there so you're starting a company like a contracting company or a cleaning and maintenance company or a company that provides tents, scaffolding, and toilet. All right? You are set up your, your companies. That's what you want. Or correct Wendy, or you could set up a company that handling all three of those things. All right? All three of those things. Correct Maria when you start being abused don't remember that the abuse was for your own good so as the victim you need to apologize right apologize to them so the people right now who telling you that you need to be in a pod and we need to pay the pod maker 12 million dollars the pod maker spending our 12 million dollars for your own good so apologize to the pod maker and them yes the fellas and them who charging 12 million dollars for pods right and we done paying them the 12 million dollars because them make the pods long before we even know we was planning to have a carnival so they shipping material pod handle pod put down pod sort out 
12 million dollars to the pod just remember that it was for your own good it is for your own good and apologize for being upset about the pods right so when you start the company you're making sure you do things like that make sure too when you start a company like that marvin thank you very much for reminding me because i was supposed to talk about it prior but i could talk about it under this point when you start the company and you make friends with political people is a range of companies you could start you could start car wash you could start company that fix in car and the interesting thing is you could start a company that fix in cars that was actually based on a model of people teeth in cars chopping up the cars and then selling the parts to other people right so you make sure you set up a company to fix cars and then what do you do you make sure that you make good 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 friends with somebody who at the top of the ttps because once you make good friends with somebody who at the top of the ttps or somebody who at the top of the ministry or works on transport for instance you could then say i have a yard that fixing cars it used to chop up cars before but now it fixing cars and thing and i have a yard that fixing cars and so as a result of that i want to be able to fix government vehicles i want to fix government cars mind you the government already have a company set up to fix cars right so we have vimcot but what we're going to do is because this fellow who fixing cars out here yard, right will allow us to be able to get a little grease hand right a little grease hand so what you do is you bypass vimcot a company that we done set up to fix cars and you allow your partner who fixing car out he out he house and he home and he business that built on state lands let me make that very clear all right that built on land that belonged to the state and thing at a point in time agricultural land and then you let that partner eat a big food all right so he ain't listen it's not one breast he's sucking on you know he might just stretch across <laughs> all right he might just he might just stretch across and so he might stretch across and he breastfeed for as long as he could breastfeed for because all right that is what you are allowing your partner to do why because your partner start a company and when your partner start the company your partner come to you and say to you hey I had this company here, boy, and you in charge of a division under the state that have multiple vehicles, hot, hot, hot vehicles. And I offer the, the company that are built on state agricultural land could fix hot, hot, hot vehicles for you. And when you fix the hot, hot, hot vehicles, when I fix, sorry, the hot, hot, hot vehicles for you, a little bit of wherever it is you give me could end back up by you all right so that is one of the main reasons you start up a company because when you start up a company and you're doing thing like contracting right and you're doing thing like fixing vehicle right and you're doing thing like cleaning and maintenance let me give all that cleaning and maintenance story right it a man right now who does dress up nice three-piece suit pocket square and them kind of things so right looking crips crips real crips and i tell you crips have partner and family members who cut in grass for the state norms 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 right family members who out here making millions of dollars when the year come cutting grass for the state me a vex with nobody hustling on me and vex with nobody for cutting grass because cutting grass is a noble task it is a noble job my family get kidnapped from a next continent and was brought here to cut grass to cut cane to dig up the ground to plant things in the ground but they were not paid for it nobody paid them any kickback 
Nobody pay them even their basic salary and nobody ain't give them anything like a pension. Nothing, nothing, nothing like that. Wait, how men now? Crips. Crips. Now tell the Crips. You can't be more Crips than them. All right? And their family cutting grass for millions of dollars when the year come. And how it is run is, again, you know a man who at the head of a particular organization and you and he scratch one another back. Let me tell you something. It a real man. This be scratching real man back in this place. For a little bit of caca there. So when fellas want to turn wrong and call women hoes and that kind of thing, sir, all they had to pause and ask all yourself, what do you know about prostitution? Hmm? What do you know about prostitution? So... You set up your company. You become a contractor on paper. You become a cleaning and maintenance company on paper. You become a <clears throat> landscaper on paper. It has some people make hundreds of millions of dollars from Ministry of Housing. Right? Hundreds of millions of dollars from Ministry of Housing to cut grass as landscapers to the nation. Right? national landscapers so i just want you all to know that it is very possible to set up a grass cutting company in this country and however many years now it is since slavery boy we almost 200 years since emancipation right and almost 200 years after emancipation you are in a position to become a millionaire from cutting grass but i will tell you something none of the persons who are millionaires from cutting grass look like me and you none none of them looking like me and you right national landscaping real money hoto to money number six and this is the last part of the list and we still we still have plenty thing to discuss you can use your government job to facilitate fraud. And if you want a recent, for example, the restaurant license or the liquor license that the party bought to get. Because the only way a man could get a liquor license for a floating restaurant after a whole permanent sec secretary write a memo saying, no, do not give this person a license because the Minister of Finance has not agreed to it. It's because somebody with a government work used their work to facilitate fraud. I say in it in big. I am saying it with my whole chest. I don't say it in quiet. I don't put water in my mouth to say nothing. I just say it in big. For a floating restaurant to be told it is a floating restaurant after a whole memo gets sent out on the 3rd of December saying no you cannot be a floating restaurant for that floating restaurant to have permission by the 23rd of December after a whole memo was written on the 3rd third of december so 20 days later right the third of december no you cannot be a floating restaurant and then boom on the 23rd of december this river boat take on a whole new identity right a whole new orientation and went from being party boat to restaurant the only way things like that could happen, the only way a perm sec could put out a memo and say, no, this can happen, and then it end up happening, is because somebody used a government work to facilitate fraud. Right? Punto final. So, let's... That is number six. Where I want to go to now. So, I want to talk about religious bodies here a little bit. And the role of religious bodies and the foolishness that has gone with religious bodies. So, actually, before I jump into that, there is a...
comment. Where is it? Back in 1986. Oh, you can say how disrespectful. It's a river boat. It's not a river boat. Whatever. It's a water vessel. I could call it a water vessel. It's a water vessel. So, back in 1986, we had an MP. His name is Desmond Carty. And Desmond Carty made a statement that I think has often been misquoted or improperly quoted. It was 1986, it was general elections time. The People's National Movement, of course, was not the, po the popular party that year because it would have gone on to lose the general elections. 33-3, if I'm not mistaken. 33-3. And Desmond Carty made a statement. He says, he had said, Everybody um, tends to quote it as all a wee thief. And what he said was, it ain't have nobody in this country who ain't thief. And he meant at every level of society, people have stolen from the state. And I saw, I think Nigel Clement on the live earlier on talking about all the way back to Cedula, right? So you had the high Europeans, and I just talk about it all the time. As a matter of fact, let me jump the gun because that's what I'm going to be talking about right afterwards and then come forward. So he said, there is nobody in this country that ain't thief. All are we thief. I thief. You thief. All are we thief. And the point that Desmond Carty was trying to make is that at every single level of this society, from rich to poor, we tend to abuse our access to state resources. Correct, Carol Campbell, Des, um, Dagger, when he was still alive and fronting for the People's National, I mean, fronting for the People's Partnership, right? When he was being Cam, one of Kamala tokens with the People's Partnership, he came out and he said the same thing about the People's Partnership. All are we thief, right? All of them thief, right? Right, good. Right. So, correct, Ros Rosanna Glasgow. That's the point that he was trying to make. Endemic corruption. That corruption is something that is just built in to our culture here. That is what we just do, right? People is reaching to our position and always looking to see if they could feed where they get tied. So they look into graves where they tie. That is how we are as a people. So, let me... Let me get, get back down to the points, the various points that I was trying to make. So religious organizations. I want to start with religious organizations. Now, Europeans reach here 500 years ago. They send fellas on boats, and as I, I find it hard, hard to trust fellas on boats <laughs> fellas on boats is a problem because <laughs> you never know you never know what they're up to so they send some fellas on boats with a flag and maybe i should put it that way when fellas on boats reach with a flag as have they concerned right fellas on boats with flags problematic so they reach with a flag they plant their flag and they decide we reach here this wheel and to be able to cement things, they start their cause. And they start their cause through religious organizations. They bring the religious organizations and the religious organizations tell we, we're doing it for the people. All right? We're here to oppress all you, beat all you, rape all you, infect all you with diseases, take everything all your own because we're doing it for the people. All right? Watch out for fellas on boats. <laughs> Fellas on boats is a problem. So these fellas on boats reach, bring the priests on them, right? Gaslight, correct, Barbara, gaslight the natives, abuse the natives, and tell the natives we're doing it for all your sake, we're doing it for all your good. We're teething everything you own, taking it from you, taking down to your culture, down to your name, down to your language, we're taking your woman, we take everything, everything. We're doing it for your own good. So that was then. And from then, this, the church has 
always benefited from the treasury tutots. So the church would have been one of the first entities to latch on to the treasury tutots and never let go. Right? Like not never let go. That's why I tell you, start a spiritual organization, start a religious organization. Once you start a religious organization, you're good to go. You're real good to go. All right? So you have that. But then look, I, I want to jump forward more so to the present. And I'm trying to keep the thing balanced this evening, right? So where's the first one? Twenty thirteen Christmas time. Kamla gave ten million dollars to churches for Christmas. Just up Sunday side. Ten million dollars to churches for Christmas. Yes, Alana, denominational schools. That's a very important point. So I'm gonna add that to the broadcast. Alana Morton has pointed out that denominational schools have got money. So actually let me jump back to that for a second and then we go um, deal up with this. So let me talk about the denominational schools. When we went from enslavement to emancipation here, one of the key things that the various um, party boats that came over here and Tiefland decided to do was set up schools because they realized once you set up schools and you're educating the natives, and I'm using natives pejoratively there, once you set up schools and you're educating black people children, you can get black people children to continue to embrace, endorse, and take on board European culture, right? And once you're doing that, you have them invested in European culture, European thinking, European mindsets, and so they're going to continue to think that they're inferior in comparison to all things European. So you bring your religious systems and you bring your education systems and you set those things up. When they started funding education for the people in the colonies, you had to apply, you had to get grants from the state and you had to apply for them grants from the state. So people turn wrong and run fast and set up organizations. Well, if you guys be making these things up, I know making these things up, you know, go and read any book about our history from 1800s come into the 1900s and you will see how initially there would have been the Roman Catholic Church and the Anglican Church. Them churches were solid because they come here, came from whence, right? The Presbyterian Church came as well to function as missionaries. And remember, all of them from European countries together, so they acknowledge in one another. Within the East Indian indentured community, you had to have the Hindu groups set up organizations, Muslim groups set up organizations, and that is how they were able to access funding from the state. The minute they set up organizations and they show the government, look, we have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 members. Because you see it very important when you set up your organization to canvas people to, to register, right? So it's not enough to just set up the organization. You have to have people actively register themselves and identify themselves as being part of your organization. So once you do that and you can show that you have numbers, everything does boil down to numbers, you know. Once you could show that you have numbers, you have statistics, you have votes, right? You have power. It have all of these people behind me. Then you can get access to money. Now, one of the really curious things at that point in time was, how they decided they were divvying up the money to the various organizations. Again, it was based on the numbers. So the larger the organization, the more money you would have gotten. And back in the 1800s and the early 1900s, the larger organizations were then the Christian denomination, the denominations, right? Catholics first, then Anglicans, then Presbyterians, etc., etc., etc. And as Alana raised the point, about denominational schools. I must talk about this. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bamboo, the other night, the other a couple of days ago, decided that he was going to do the whole 
dog whistle thing. So he was talking about the fire that took place. And I eventually going to come wrong to talking about the fire. But since we're talking about schools and education, and I need to clear up something yet again, he's always, he's always had to clear up things and, and clarify historical events. And I talked about this here already, by the way. When I was talking about education, I talked about the cowshed statement, and I'm going to talk about the cowshed statement again. In Shan, a couple days ago, made reference to cow pens. And he did not make reference to cow pens in a vacuum. He made reference to cow pens when talking about the fire that took place in Bamboo because he wanted to say the government spending money on cow pens, referring to the pods, but don't want to spend money on state lands. Now it was an apples and oranges comparison to make for a number of reasons. The money that is being spent on the Taster Carnival, whether you agree with it or not, is money being spent on culture and the government has a ministry and the ministry has a budget earmarked to spe for spending money on culture. If Inchan wants money to be spent on the bamboo community, he has to be able to show that it is a planned legal community. Punto final. But he made the cow pen comment because he wanted to be able to raise the dog whistle of cow sheds. And the, cow, the dog whistle of cow sheds, of course, is something that the East Indian community, specifically the Hindu community, not the Muslim community, the Hindu community. But Inchan was trying to mix and merge things so that he could rally discontent. So he makes the cow pen reference. And I want to go back to this. And I want to clarify something. Back in the 1940s, the Mahasabha would have received grant funding for setting up schools, right? He, they would have received grant funding to set up and build schools for infrastructure. There was a grant that was made available, an educational grant from the state. This would have been around 1947, thereabouts. So grant funding was made available to a range of organizations. Because the Catholic school board was already an established school board, the Anglican school board already established, Presbyterian school board already established, Muslims and Hindus needed to establish their various religious, their various religious education organizations. And the Muslims were way ahead of um, the Hindu community in terms of setting up their organizations. So the TIA, yes, the TIA and TML were in a position to they were in a position to access grant funding. The Hindu organization, the Mahasabha, eventually got its act together, set up its organization, got its grant funding. And then years later, when questions were asked about where did the money go with respect to the setup of schools, nobody could answer, right? And that's something we see happen here over and over and over again. Repeatedly, people apply for state resources. People apply for state largesse. People apply for state funding to do one thing and then they use the state funding to do something else. So you would have had a situation where multiple religious organizations or multiple denominational organizations, because there would have been religious school boards, applied for the grant did not oh, sorry apply for the grant use the grants to build schools and then when a tour was done going to these various schools it was discovered that some schools had their children being educated in classrooms that were for the most part open air right so a shed with pillars and posts and the most basic setup, the most basic setup. And so the statement was made, children are being taught in cow sheds. And that was said because 
Other schools had proper wooden or wooden slash concrete structures. And here you had an organization that applied for grant funding, got the grant funding, and did not build the schools. And so that is where that entire comment comes from. And it's one of the things, whenever it gets raised, and it is always raised as a dog whistle comment to imply racism, because of course you know, this is a country where certain groups feel you cannot hold them to account at all. Don't say nothing, don't call the name, don't mention nothing. The minute you say anything, they're quick to say racism, right? Me don't have a problem with that. You see where it look? You see the text, yeah? Right. Me don't have a problem with that. I can say what it is I had to say, or they could call me all the names all they want to call me, but you cannot dispute the history. Grants were allocated from state funds, from the treasury tuttuts, right? Grants were allocated from the treasury tuttuts. And when time come for people to explain what they did with the grant money, they couldn't explain it. So now let me get back to the point that I was making. So Alana, thanks for reminding me um, so that I could have cleared that up because when I saw that comment from Inshan earlier on in the week, I thought to myself, it's unfortunate that you've decided that, you know, dog whistling is the route that you're going to go. Because I, as a woman, will always ever remember things like that. Always. And when you need to resort to dog whistling to get your point across, I know that you don't really have any solid points. You know why? I don't have to come here and dog whistle. I don't ever have to come here and dog whistle. When I come here and I'm talking about something, invariably, I have evidence to give all you. I don't show up here and dog whistle. So, religious bodies. Let me get back to religious bodies. Oh my goodness. 2013. And there's an issue that I have with religious bodies. There is never any accountability. Religious organizations here are exempt from taxes. And they have always ever been exempt from taxes because they're in a position to leverage power and authority on the state. Because... They're able to say to the state, whether it's the crown or an independent government, we have all of these voters and we could destabilize your government by telling people, don't vote for you in five years time because you have gone against us in a particular way. So religious organizations here don't pay tax. They don't pay tax, but they have access to all of the goods and services that the state does provide, right? All the goods and services that the state does provide, but they pay no taxes. The other interesting thing is religious organizations can apply for and gain access to money grants as well as land grants. You'll have no idea how much state land has been divvied up to religious organizations. As a matter of fact, let me now let me close this down i don't go back to to this uh, to this to this picture here is he mr ishmael mr ishmael needs to explain to the country baraka grounds wasn't baraka grounds granted or gifted a state lands from the government to the muslim community for religious purposes because I just drive past B Baraka grounds now, which is land that I know, which was state land, and it was state land given to the Muslim community, and it's a car wash and a food court. When I remember that years ago, when the land was granted, one of the things that was supposed to happen on the land was a hospital. A hospital. So I want to know, Baraka lands that set up down when you're heading, when you're heading towards the Nagar site, or you must know Baraka grounds. If you do a Google search now, me are making this up, do a Google search now about Baraka grounds and why it was granted or why those lands were granted. And you will see that the lands were granted 
to a religious organization for specific purposes for that for that religious community right so i am always ever confused as drive past and i'm just thinking to myself i thought a hospital was supposed to go up here right instead is a car wash is a food court and you see let me tell you all something we have laws but we do enforce laws because when you apply to the government for any of its resources for specific reasons if you don't use the resources for those reasons that is actually fraud so if somebody apply to let me say nlcb and i could talk this because i know this and i had the documents to be able to prove it but let me say a promoter dear promoter apply to nlcb and you apply to nlcb for money to do a vaccination campaign right so let me say you apply to nlcb and you apply to nlcb and you say you want money to do a vaccination campaign featuring these persons right nikisha maslin debbie and it's going to feature nikisha maslin debbie you know if you take the self same money and you feature other people let me say you feature a tv personality you feature a politician if it, that's fraud that is fraud so imagine you have applied for state lands you get gifted the state lands you are given the state lands and you're given the state lands for a particular purpose and then you turn wrong and you're using the lands not for the purpose that you claim the land for i mean i feel it has some questions to answer there i feel it has questions to answer there so to get back to the point i'm making about religious organizations we have religious organizations here they set up they're getting money Kamala would have given 10 million for people to to hold christmas back in 2013 now you have whoops just now let me close that at the height of the pandemic 2020 30 million dollars right government funding 30 million dollars you know it is gonna vex about our money that 30 million dollars because the point of the 30 million dollars was to distribute it was supposed to distribute for people in need across through religious organizations my concern was my query from the jump was accountability and auditing because there was nothing put in place to ensure that the 30 million dollars that was distributed by the government was used in the, in the way it was meant to use there was nothing put in place. Nobody had to provide no invoices. Nobody had to provide no budget. Nothing, 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 nothing. $30 million. And the, 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 one of the stories that I looked at today, um, the news, they had a breakdown of how much money went to the various religious denominations. But there was no accountability. And then here was one of the statements that was made. That the only consequence, this was at a press conference, they were, the, 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 the minister, line minister was asked, how they're going to account if they don't do things and don't distribute money in the right way. And what they say, they'll have to account to God. God is not the Auditor General. God is not the Auditor General. So that is why you could set up a religious organization here and run level racket, enough racket, and nobody is going to ask you a question. You know why? Because you are accountable to God. Nobody will ask you a question. So if you're serious about running your racket in this country, if you're serious about wanting to latch on to the treasury, tut -tut, all you had to do is set up a religious organization. That's all you had to do. So I want to get wrong to why I used Advantage as the song to start off this evening. All I remember that the former... Prime Minister Patrick Manning would have moved Carnival from the Queen's Park Savannah. All remember that? Anybody remember that? That the whole business of parading through the, 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 the Queen's Park Savannah and crossing the stage in the Queen's Park Savannah, that had come to an end? I want to see if all remember that. 
2011, when Advantage was sung, Advantage was sung and became a huge hit because that was the year the stage, crossing the Savannah stage, came back. And when you listen to this song, in it, let me thank the government for taking me off the pavement. But I want to explain something to all you. It's only today as I sit down and I'm going through all of the um and I'm going through all of the, the, the past stories and newspaper articles, something hit me. Because the let we thank the government meant 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 they take we off the pavement meant meant meant. So let me tell all you something. One of the biggest rackets in this country around carnival time is stage and scaffolding i i, I know if all you if all you're clear on that one of the biggest rackets in <laughs> this country when carnival time come wrong is the building and erecting and setting up of stage and scaffolding so you see the stage that is put up Dong Dong Port of Spain, right? Exactly. Song system, stage, toilet, right? So stage, scaffolding, North Stand. The North Stand is a whole racket. Just the putting up and taking down of the North Stand every carnival time. And, I, and all you need to understand this. When will you see a particular piece of foolishness happening over and over and over again? You have to stop and ask yourself, but why? We live in a country where it has so many construction firms. You come in to tell me, up to now, nobody can erect or establish or build a proper space for carnival or a proper stage for the for the queen's park savannah that does not involve all that cost you know why it had to involve all that cost because that's how people making money when the carnival come and during the period 2010 to 2015 spending for carnival went from around a hundred million dollars a year to close to 200 million dollars a year because of all of the rackets surrounding carnival. Stage, lighting, scaffolding, putting up the huts around the savannah, right? Having, having various ministries sponsor their own carnival ban, having various ministries buy carnival tickets to distribute. Carnival in and of itself became a huge racket for sucking money off the, the, the treasury and that's why when the pods racket happen and i will call it a pods racket who vex could vex but when you come in to tell me that you bill pods long before the cabinet even see a carnival budget i know is level wildness going on this is not a situation where the budget was presented to the cabinet the cabinet discuss it and then they say okay all right yes this is what we're going to go with this is the plan and this is what the plan going to cost we now go and talk to the contractors and them about building pods you know mm -mm. Mm -mm. that is not how it work out the pod and them build first and carnival come after to 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 to, to embrace the pods right so you build the pods first and then you create the festival. You create a taste of carnival to justify the millions of dollars that you're going to be spending on pods. And you see that? You see that kind of nastiness? And when I pause and I think to myself, the same person who bring back carnival to the Queen's Park Savannah and so therefore re-established all of the spending for the Queen's Park Savannah is the person who was central to them pods. I say to myself, ah boy, Racket could never done in this place. Could never done in this place. And that is why I chose that song this evening. 
because when you go and you watch the video for that song you will see who central to the racket then in 2011 and the racket now in 2022 right me have nothing else to say where that is concerned i don't want people to feel that i don't want them to enjoy carnival and i um fighting on the culture because i not fighting on the culture i fighting on the racket maybe i should the culture of racket that we have here that we feel once we say we're doing it for people and we're doing it to make jobs and we're doing it for so that single mothers could 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 make some money and earn some money when the year come it's okay to get involved in racket let me see things that is bother me so that is religious bodies that is carnival state companies and contractors to some extent i also want to talk about again something that linked to europeans i mean them started right and you know once it once them start something is we just can we just can't seem to stop it. Where, where, where them Im images, boy? Oh, Lord. I didn't put them images up. I'm upset with myself now, man. Land grabbing. That's what I wanted to talk about. Right? Land grabbing. That's one of the next things we just do. We real, real, real good at that. I, 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 I know. I, I had the thing under control, man. Look me here. Land grabbing. So this is... Some Garani lands. It's a story from back in 2020. And the story talks about land grabbing at the height of the pandemic. Right? So squatters occupying land. Now, land grabbing, there's a norm here. White people show up, grab land, and after that, everybody felt that that's how you just get land. The only is only about a handful of people I feel just think they have to actually go and buy, pay for deed and, 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 and pay stamp duty and thing. Everybody else is grab land. And it is something similar that would have gone on with land that where houses get built on. So imagine you in a situation where you see state land. State land by a river bank, eh? by a river bank so agricultural land by a river bank and you go by that agricultural land by the river bank and you build up your house right there then your house go from being a house to being a business because it's plenty land you, there's plenty land you decide you're squatting on you ain't squatting on one lot and thing you know you squatting on an acre a two acres right that's what is going on there you should feel judged Alana, I want you to feel judged. You had to be the only idiot I know who looking to go and buy land. Why are you looking to pay money for land, Alana? Alana, let me explain to you how you're supposed to do it. You know what? Let me let me put back myself on the um, on the land, on the life. Let me give you the advice, Alana. If you want to be a businesswoman in this country, Alana, go and look for state land. It is better that you look for state land in a place that is likely to experience things like flooding or some sort of damage when the year come. You know why? Because you want to be in a situation where you could tell the state that it owing you money. It have to give you money. Because if you go and you squat on land where there are no problems at all, then... You're not going to be in a position to get money and get resources from the state to develop the land. I shouldn't have to read and spell everything for you. Right? You want to make sure that you go and you squat on land that is in a position to be flooded or to have to deal up with some sort of disaster when the year come. So that when the disaster takes place, the state could give you money. Right? And so, when the state giving you money, remember, you done on state land. It ain't no mortgage to pay it. Because you ain't paying the bank no mortgage because it's not the bank help you buy the land. And you didn't actually buy the land from the state. You just went and set up on it. 
and start to regularize yourself. So when you go and you set up on land that you don't own and you regularize yourself, so you start to build structure and then you go to Wasa and you make noise and you make sure you get media to come and show pictures of you and a whole set of family and children who poorly dress and in front of the TV like, eh, 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 and the government don't do nothing for we, right? Once you could do things like that, then you're going to pressure the state into giving you money. Why? Because the government don't want to look bad. Especially if you manage to have protests like that close to an election cycle. Timing is important. You cannot just suck the treasury tuttots willy-nilly. You have to time when you're going to latch on to the breasts. And once you have timed when you're going to latch on to the breasts, then you will be in a position to leverage the power you have. And so that way, you're on land that you didn't pay for, and then the government going to give you money for whatever it is you experienced. And then you are able to take that money and build further on the land. And when you have taken that money and you have built further on the land, you could then establish business. You could expand even further. And when you establish business and expand even further, you are now in a position to get Wasa and TN Tech to regularize you. And you see, once you pay in a water bill, whether the land is yours, was yours, could be yours, the land is yours. Punto final. The minute you start getting public utilities and bills come into a specific address, it's yours. How are they going to kick you off it? Because you have evidence to show that this land is yours. Electricity run into your house. Water run into your house. So all you had to do is earmark a piece of land that you want to squat on, carry your friends and your family, and make sure all you make plenty noise. Every time it rain, plenty noise. Every time breeze, breeze sorry, <laughs> every time breeze blow hard, plenty noise. And always remember to say, the government ain't doing nothing for we. That's real important. The next thing I talked about earlier was gangs. When you have gangs, you are in a position to leverage your power in a particular way. We in this country spent millions of dollars. Where it, boy? Let me see if I could find it. I remember this fella. I remember Anil. I remember Anil. I remember the life sport probe. Four hundred million dollars was in a news story. But when you started to check things up, it was probably closer to a billion dollars that was spent on a criminal entity. And that's what I want all you to understand. When you're in a position where you have clout, where you could apply pressure, where you could tell people, hey, I could sway votes for you. I could give you votes. I could guarantee you 5,000 votes or 10,000 votes or better than that, I could prevent 5,000 votes or I could prevent 3,000 votes from showing up at the polls to be able to vote for you. You have plenty power and you could reach and grab on to the treasury tutts and never let go. So, Four hundred million dollars get buried in life sport. And we never get a proper account for that four hundred million dollars and where that four hundred million dollars went to. We hear all kind of stories. Our hasty report was done by Hawaii. I don't know if there was ever a proper report done again after that. Not a person get locked up because of life sport. We know people get murdered. 43 people get murdered because of the gang war that life sport triggered in multiple communities around this country. Not a person who was the mastermind behind life sport get, get arrested. Not a permsec, not a minister, 
not any of the persons within the ministry at that point in time or within the sporting company at that point in time who was responsible for signing off on all of the contracts and all of the all of the the protocols involved with life sport not a person all you could talk to me all you could talk to all you can listen it are nobody in this country could come and talk to me about corruption you know nobody could come and talk to me about corruption thank you very much wendell barclay one person get 34 million dollars one person get 34 million dollars i think he did last year year before last year all right one person got 34 million dollars and they couldn't get back the money from him you know why because the contract just was that he was supposed to propose to teach something he didn't actually have to do it so the nature of the contract was so loose and so weak that what the state basically did was just give the man 34 million dollars all right yep daniels either last year or year before last year he alone he won get 34 million dollars 400 million dollars went missing in life sport so if all you start a gang and all your gang could guarantee votes or guarantee that people do vote or they inside or they could practically live in the treasury the next thing i talked about i talked about contractors and i talk about the set of money that contractors is be making right munilal calco in the embd scandal bid rigging etc 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 them kind of thing you set up a company and you have your good good friends on them you could set up your company and you making sure that your good good friends and them making sure that you get contracts and once you get in contracts and you're making sure them getting kicked back and them kind of things so from the contract you're good to go you're good to go because that's what bid rigging means bid rigging means that i if i as a minister setting things up so that you get in the contract but once you get the contract you then have to make sure that i get my cut and once you making sure I get my cut, you're safe. You're safe. You're good to go. Unless somebody blow a whistle. Unless somebody blow a whistle and provide facts, provide details, provide evidence. And even after evidence and facts have, have, have been provided, you still need a police service that willing to do the hard work of putting together the case and making sure that charges are brought against persons. So in this country, you have plenty contractors who linked to bid rigging, ministers who linked to bid rigging, details, evidence, left, right, and center, persons linked to bid rigging, and not a person could end up in court or a bracelet end up on their hand. And I just want to ask Farris questions, you know. I just want to come here and sit down and go through white color criminal cases from 2015 to now because we talk real talk from 2015 to now about all kind of corruption that took place for 63 months and i still waiting to see men be arrested right and i still waiting for case to call and matter to hear i still waiting so i feel tonight when i finish do this live i'm going to send faris a whatsapp and ask him if he's willing to do an interview on New Source. Because I know he's busy calling my name in him out all over the place. So far, I ain't want you to be calling my name in vain. So I will message you to find out if you want to come and do an interview. Because we could face off right here. Mano, e womano. Because me ain't going to call myself a man. And if at any point in time you feel you're ready to come and have a sit down chat about what is going on with all them white color crime cases that your organization supposed to have oversight of i good to go i happy and thing about it is me i'm gonna be aggressive i gonna sit down here and allow you to talk i will however ask very pertinent questions one of the questions i will want to ask is you and molinal is friend are you and rudal molinal good friends and i do just mean parliamentary colleagues i want to know if Oli is friend why is it it taking forever for anything to happen with these cases because white collar crime is an issue Faris. so instead of crying to everybody and saying that i attacking you 
show up. Message me and tell me, yes, you're willing to do an interview. And I go set up a special time just to suit your, your schedule. Me even doing it wrong, my schedule. I will do it to suit your schedule. So the two of we could sit down here and discuss white color crime cases and what is really going on in white color crime in this country. I might also want to discuss paragraph four. You know me, as a girl is like to, you know, cover the, cover my bases and thing, right? So I might want to discuss paragraph four. We could discuss it and just talk about the unconstitutionality of passing laws for one person. So, folks, this is where we are at. I think the five or six steps that I would have given you are five or six very useful steps. And I think the various examples I would have given you of how those various organizations and steps have been used over the years, over the centuries, are very good working examples for you. So now you know how to go about sucking the treasury tuttuts. Don't say I never teach all you nothing. Right? You can't say that I never teach all you anything. All right. So, folks, I'm going to wrap up here. Next weekend, we ain't going to be talking no set of backs. Next weekend, I want to talk. There's, there are a couple solution-oriented things I want to talk about. Now, of course, I know that the quieter topics, not many of you just necessarily show up for the quieter topics. But that, that, that that's all right. I don't have a problem with it's just a small group of us meeting but I want to start I want to talk about a couple things I want to talk about food I want to talk about growing we own food and I also want to talk about mental health issues because we've had a couple situations in the last couple of weeks where suicide depression mental health those things have been high in the public domain and you're looking at people who are harming themselves taking their lives right and I, I feel we need to get back to some mental health discussions mental health issues and I really really want to talk about an experiment that I am working on with respect to growing food right so those of you that are interested in that next week those are the things we're going to be focused on so you all take it easy have yourselves a good week I hope you all enjoyed this evening. Thank you to get that one to just, 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 thank you to get that one to just,